Good morning. We are happy you are joining us today as we share some important information and a few thoughts about the first day of school this Monday. Thousands of teachers, principals, and support staff have been working to ensure that we open as smoothly as possible. The goal is simple, to provide meaningful learning for every child each day in spite of the new and different learning environment in which we find ourselves. I will return shortly to share some thoughts with you. But first, Superintendent Kathy Moore will present important information we want our parents and community to know in preparation for Monday. Kathy. Kathy, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Thanks, Lisa. That helps, doesn't it? It does. Thank you, Chair Sutton. Welcome, everyone. We hope you've had a great summer and found an opportunity to fit in some, recs and, some rest and relaxation, even if it was a staycation, for the past eight weeks in spite of COVID-19. I will underscore Chair Sutton's gratitude to our teachers principals, and other school leaders for everything they have done to get us to the first day of school under very different circumstances. We often express gratitude for the hard work and dedication of our staff. This time, that phrase takes on a whole new depth of meaning. Many of our staff have been working quite literally day and night and through many weekends to pull off a small miracle, opening school in a nearly 100% virtual environment to ensure the safety of our staff and students while also making good learning happen. We've spoken a lot since March about grace and flexibility as we navigate our way through this pandemic. At no time will this be more important in our district than in the coming few weeks. Please know that we are doing everything we can to ensure that students are learning and families are supported throughout all of the challenges. Whether your child is attending school in Plan B transition or the WCPSS Virtual Academy, what I'm about to cover will apply. The first two weeks of this year will be an orientation period. Your school should have contacted you by now about what this means for your child. There will be a tremendous amount of flexibility involved during the next two weeks as students settle into their home learning environments and as teachers work to develop relationships with students and to prepare them to receive meaningful instruction. It is possible that schools may not deliver the full two to three hours of live instruction during weeks one and two due to orientation events. If your child is having issues with your school's scheduling or other needs, we need you to know that that's okay. We will work with students to ensure their learning is progressing appropriately. Patience will be the order of the day among teachers, staff, students, and families. Taking the first two weeks to orient students to a new year is no different than the opening of school before the pandemic. But there are obviously differences. One of the biggest differences will be a completely new set of high expectations for remote learning compared to this past spring. This will be school as we know it for the time being. As such, expectations for attendance and participation will be as if students are attending school in person. So what does this mean for parents? First, attendance will be taken. Students will have a, who have a two-way interaction with a teacher, such as a virtual classroom setting, email, phone call, or turning in daily assignments will be counted as present. You will receive more details about attendance from your school. Second, we know that not every student will have connectivity the first day of school or even perhaps the first week or so. Again, that's okay. We have hundreds of employees and volunteers who will be devoting the next two weeks to reaching out to families who need devices and connectivity and to support them in getting access. And I would like to thank these folks for giving their very limited time to this crucial effort. It is very important for families to know that they are not to go to their child's school to try and secure a device. There are five high schools across the county serving as distribution sites. You will be notified when a device, device will be available to you. If you go to a distribution site prior to receiving a notification, there will not be a device available for you and it will slow the process down for everyone. We will work with students to ensure their learning is progressing appropriately. Your child will not be penalized for getting online later than others. 
We have developed resources to help you in preparing for the first days and weeks of school. We encourage you to visit our back to school website at wcpss.net. We know that many of you were disappointed to learn that due to concerns about where we are at this point in the pandemic, that we will not be able to open school September 8th for special education, regional program and pre-K students. It is important to know that online services will be provided for students who need them. Again, teachers have been reaching out to these families to arrange how this can happen. And again, we ask for patience and understanding while we work through this. As always, it is imperative that ongoing and fluid communication happens between and among students, families, and schools. Please know that your child's schedule will include both live and pre-recorded sessions. We know that many of you have concerns about your child being in front of a screen for long periods of time. The schedules your schools are creating will allow for considerable off-screen time for exercise and other activities. As we enter this new world on Monday, I ask you to remember that a great deal of time, energy, effort, thought, and care has been devoted by thousands of our employees and partners to give your child the best learning situation possible. We wish you all the best for a successful, safe, and healthy school year. Chair Sutton. Thank you, Superintendent Moore. I would like to start by welcoming our newest school, South Lakes Elementary School, to the Wake County Public School System. Principal Kim Short is a veteran administrator who we know has some great ideas in store for the South Lakes Sea Turtles and their families. It is always exciting to welcome a brand new school to our district, a sign of growth and new life, even in these challenging times. I want to reiterate Superintendent Moore's commitment to ensuring that while it might take a little time, we aim to have all students equipped with the devices and connectivity they need to learn as soon as possible. We thank our students and families for being patient as our employees and volunteers Work diligently to get these devices in your hands as quickly as possible. Also, a note about food service. Meals will continue to be served at no cost to students through Monday, August 31st at our food distribution sites. Beginning Tuesday, September 1st, students will pay for meals based on their meal benefits eligibility. At this point, Students must present a valid ID number in order to receive meals. Parents and guardians may pick up meals without a student present if they can provide the ID number of the student. For more information and a list of all community food distribution sites, visit wcpss.net slash food. I'm proud to represent the leadership of the Wake County Public School System as we take on this most unusual of endeavors. Why? Because I have every confidence in the competency, commitment, and consistency among our teachers, principals, support staff members, and the professionals who lead them. I've spoken with many of you in our community, parents, students, community partners, who have real and justifiable concerns about how this school year is going to go. Those who have spent the summer planning for this year have displayed a level of professionalism and undying devotion to our core mission of preparing students for the world in which they will live. And to plan for the delivery of the same high level of instruction as they would if we were opening our school doors on Monday. It's quite an amazing feat, I know. I speak on behalf of my fellow board members when I say that I'm truly grateful to them. I am also grateful to our parents and community partners. You have exhibited a generous amount of patience, understanding, and compassion. Much needed and much appreciated among our professionals, many of whom will continue to work through this weekend to make Monday as positive an experience as possible for your children. We've said it many times before and we will continue to say it. We are all in this together, all of us. As with any good community, we will continue to work hard, support each other, encourage each other, and offer kindness and compassion as we work together toward one of life's highest callings, 
preparing our next generation for success and fulfillment in their lives. The methods might be a bit different for the time being, but the sincere efforts and positive outcomes will certainly be the same. Thank you for your support of the Wake County Public Schools system, and please have a safe, healthy, and successful school year. We will now take questions. Please state your name and the media outlet you represent before asking your question. Adam Owens with WREL News. I know you were talking earlier about um, efforts to try to get uh, and make sure every child was connected. Do you have a handle on maybe where those numbers may be right now? How many children may still need that connectivity? Um, I can start with that, Chair Sutton. So we know that we have had requests for about 38,000 devices and about 10,000 hotspots. I'm not sure where we are in distribution. Um, the bulk of the distribution begins on Monday. Link quickly with CBS 17 News. I know you said that uh, absences will, or that's going to be counted. Does that apply to the first two weeks? What if there's still connectivity issues and getting online for some of those students? Hi. So we're asking our teachers to um, find ways to reach out to students that may not be through an online method. So whether it's a phone call or an email or some other type of contact, all of those methods of contact during that time would certainly be acceptable for attendance purposes. Hi, good morning. This is Jonah Kaplan from ABC 11. I uh, wanted to ask about the transition back to school. Is there a benchmark, a metric that you're following where you say, okay, we're going to end virtual and then go back to school and following that? Because more than half of the district, you know, 83, 84,000 kids are signed up for virtual academy. If the in-school population is going to be lower, could you then also increase instead of maybe once every three weeks, you know, the, the group goes back to school, it could be once every two weeks. I start by saying, you know, we will continue monitoring the, the data, which is uh, our plan. You may have heard about the efforts we are undertaking uh, as a board of superintendent to work with a, a media advisor, I'm sorry, medical advisory board uh, with uh, uh, professionals and health health professionals from Duke that will help us to continue monitoring that data over the coming weeks that will help guide uh, our decision making. Uh, so that is our hope at this point, but I'll let Superintendent Moore speak uh, and provide more details uh, around that. So Chair Sutton is correct. We are entering into a partnership and we'll actually have more information about that at the work session on Tuesday um, to stand up and participate in a COVID scientific advisory board so that we can build our own capacity as a community of teachers um, and educators and the board and even the community around what data and metrics look like to build both our capacity and our confidence about when we will be ready to return to schools. Um, with regards to 50% of the students being in the virtual academy, we are paying attention to those numbers and how that goes and whether or not that does provide an opportunity um, for when we return to in-person instruction for it to shift and be able to possibly increase that frequency. Um, we, we're gonna look at all of those numbers and see what it looks like and follow the guidance closely. Um, and and so, as I said before, um, the flexibility and the fluidity, the ability to pivot will remain in place for a while. It's Adam again. A, a few schools returned um, yesterday, the modified calendar schools. Do you guys have any idea on what attendance looked like for those schools as kind of leading indicators? And was there anything else you learned by seeing a few schools start this process? 
we haven't pulled any data yet on the first day of school at those, I think it was seven schools that started on that calendar yesterday. Um, but we'll, we'll be looking at it to see what it does look like. And, um, you know, we've generally speaking, we've gotten positive feedback from how schools are trying really hard to establish those connections with students, you know, drive by pickup of materials, uh, finding ways to connect, whether it's virtually or in, or in other ways, and really sort of setting expectations and, and doing exactly what we've asked them to do, which is to work on building relationships and agreements around how we're going to engage in the virtual environment. Uh, Jonah Kaplan again with ABC 11. Uh, you, you talk about attendance and obviously, look, the number one priority is to have the student there because we want them to learn and grow uh, and all those things. But how important also is attendance, especially on the 20th or 21st day of school when it comes to the state and per people, determining per people spending? Are you concerned about losing some of those dollars? And if so, why is that significant? Superintendent Moore may, may add to this, but you know that that's always a a, a concern. We're looking at that. Uh, the state, I believe, is making some uh, adjustments around how we um, uh, count or look at the uh, twenty-one day uh, enrollment and looking at uh, the, the virtual uh, piece of that. But I'll let Superintendent Moore speak to that. But I think there are some uh, adjustments being made by the state board uh, to to help uh, address that so that districts don't lose uh, funding because we are in a virtual environment. Superintendent Moore. So um, thank you, Chair Sutton. So we know that um, also next Tuesday, we'll, re we'll revise our attendance policy a bit based on some guidance from DPI that will provide greater flexibility with, and expectations around how we count students present in a virtual environment. Uh, but when it comes to resources and the number of students who are or not engaged, um, every year, whether we're in a virtual environment or not, our schools work very hard to contact students that are on their roles but haven't shown up in, in even in, in person. And so we'll continue to do that work to try to determine what's happening, if there are barriers and we can support them. Um, I don't think that um, there have been any decisions made about uh, uh, a request that has been made by superintendents to hold districts harmless to expected um, enrollment numbers, knowing that the pandemic may have an impact on that. But that is a request that's sitting out there. Um, that that schools not be penalized because we know that our students and our families will be coming in and out likely all year long depending on those circumstances um, and so we do need some greater flexibility in that area kern huey from the news observer the uh, state is allowing school districts to um, use the uh, spring and the grade testing and in the course exams that weren't given is that something that wake plans used to start a school year and if not are you concerned then you won't have any information on how students are academically at the start of the school year so i believe that um one of the things that has come out from the testing accountability office at the department of public instruction is that if students are engaged in remote learning there is not an expectation that they access those end of course or end of grade tests from last spring um, as a way to uh, sort of have a diagnostic for the beginning of the school year so i don't think that we will be engaging in those that type of testing um, if we're not required to do so however we have spent a lot of time over the summer uh, building a crosswalk and a bridge for the content from the last quarter of the school year so that we can integrate it with the content for the next school year so that we have, are providing an opportunity to ensure that any missed content or any content that needs to be uh, done again in order to ensure that we have some diagnostic information, that that work can take place in schools. So we're trying to facilitate that through how we resource um, the teachers and provide pacing guides and materials to do so. Calling quickly with CBS 17 News, uh, just going off of that again, you mentioned at the beginning that the standard is going to be higher than it was last spring. But does that mean it's as high as it would be if the students were in the classroom, given the virtual scenario? And what is going to be your way of, of measuring that? So we've, we've often said that 
there's really no replacement for the in-person instruction. We do believe in person in person is best, but that doesn't mean that you can't have high quality virtual instruction. And that is our goal. Um, a couple of other things that are different from last spring are that we have we will have assessments and grading and progress monitoring that wasn't required or in place um, in, in that emergency scenario last spring. So there'll be a lot more work around assessing and monitoring student progress. Um, and I think that will make a really big difference to ensuring that our students are achieving high levels of learning. And um, you know the with that and the attendance requirements and and the additional time that teachers have had to start working to prepare and get ready for this. We really do hope that between that and the resources uh, that we can establish a sound platform in the virtual environment for all of our students. Do we have any last questions? Great, then with that, we conclude this press conference. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa.